you've got the Nixon Report. I'm Lionel Nixon, and tonight I have a guest, the Honorable Alderman Tony Folks, Alderman of the 15th Ward, who due to remapping is now running for Alderman in the new 16th Ward. Alderman, how are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you for having me. Well, it's always a pleasure to have the opportunity to talk with a progressive alderman who has stood the test of time. I think you've been in for seven years, and you have, in my opinion, and in the opinion of many other people, have been fighting for the people in the neighborhoods and have always protected their interest and have not just gone along with anything that's against their interests. Tell me a little bit about your background. A little bit about my background. Well, I am a 44 or 45, 44 year resident of West Inglewood. I've been in the community since I was seven. And um, I love my community. I uh, went to public school grammar school right at Ralph J. Bunch, right at 65th and, and Ashland, right there in this, the new 16th Ward. And I graduated from Academy of Our Lady High School and went on to Intercontinental University and uh, received a Bachelor's of Applied Arts in Merchandising. So merchandise and marketing was my, my background. I worked for Jewels for 19 years. Total, I have 25 years of grocery retail experience. So my goal in the grocery industry was to be vice president of merchandising. So how did I end up as an alderman, but became very committed to the community that I lived in, that I loved. And uh, the opportunity came and I ran and was elected, and which was an honor to be elected in a community where I had grown up for so many years. Now, alderman, <coughs> You're the alderman of the 15th Ward, and I do know, because I myself live in the 15th Ward, mm -hmm. that there, during uh, 2011, I was in St. Louis at the time. I was working in the campaign of President Barack Obama, and uh, I found out uh, that the ward that I lived in, it was changed at 90 to 92% African American ward was just cut into pieces. And I think the ward is 60% Hispanic now, 40% African American, but you can correct me mm -hmm. if I'm wrong. I think I'm accurate. Mm -hmm. And it was the, the most, what I would say, gerrymandered, gerrymandered, <laughs> gerrymandered uh, mm -hmm. example of what is wrong with politics and and just could you just tell me what happened <laughs> well really what happened and a lot of people don't understand is that uh, especially residents uh, of the old 16th ward mm -hmm. um, and I had to explain to residents that in the remap the the new 16th ward is consisted of the 15th, the 16th, the 17th, the t a little bit of 20, and a part of a little bit of the 14th. And it's not just, you know, me running in the 16th ward, but 40% of my old ward is now in the new 16th. So the people that I represented wanted me to run. To you know, to run in 16, so I can continue to represent them, and uh, that was the decision I made. And I also got a little, you know, encouragement from the old 16th ward residents. So that was the decision that I made. It was a business decision, not anything other than that. Well, uh, you have a number of endorsements. Probably we don't have enough time on this show to talk about <laughs> all all of your endorsements, but mm -hmm. I know that your punch number is 53, mm -hmm. and 
Can you just tell us about some of your more significant, I mean, they're all significant, significant but yeah. some of your endorsements? Well, uh, probably is, a, we probably got about 20, 21 endorsements. Probably the, um, they're, like you say, they're all great. And I thank them all. Uh, Cook County Board President, Tony Prackwinkle, um, Karen Lewis from the Teachers Union. We also have SEIU, ASME, UFCW, FOP, uh, Federation of Labor, because you got some, a lot of new ones. I forgot about that one as well. Uh, a lot, and a, a lot of them. Well, Too many to mention, and I'm sorry if I forgot someone, that, but that, about, that, about that, 20, that, 21. That, that demonstrates that people know that you are an excellent person to take on the responsibility mm -hmm. forthcoming in the new 16th Ward. And the United Working Families. I don't want to miss them, definitely. United Working, working families. families. Yeah. Well, let's talk uh, a little shop. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that one of your issues is public safety. Tell us about some of your ideas on public safety, a little mm -hmm. bit about what you've done. You, 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 you've done. Mm -hmm. Well, um, First of all, public safety has always been, when I started from 2007, has been the key issue. And uh, some of the, one of the exciting things that I've done, um, and that's working with community, working with the police, yes. and um, myself, it has just been um, wonderful. You used to always hear, everything was Inglewood. Everything was Inglewood. And you don't hear that as much as you used to. We were always, uh, I have, I represent in my current 15th ward, I represent 7th and 8th district, and both challenging. 7th district is um, Inglewood. Used to always be the number one. Re e neither one of the new, the districts now is on the top three. Now, uh, we have CAPS programs, and but myself, I'm always, at least once to twice a month, I am at Comstat, and that's down at 35th, so I'm meeting with the suits, and, and it makes a world of difference. They see my faces. I'm, I'm with the uh, superintendent and the chiefs and the deputy chiefs, so um, I, have a t I have a time to dialogue with them, which makes a world of difference. And uh, even just on recently, I have a new commander and I, in both in both in eighth in the eighth district we had uh, problems with some robberies you know and just driving down 63rd there are police that are stationed and that's something new and yeah. i and i was with the commander yesterday yeah. and he said yeah we're, we're trying he said but you know you can't have i can't have a police at every corner yes but they they're stationed out there and you know, over in Seven District, we do have walking, the walking beats. We do have bike um, police officers on bikes. I've and seen them. Yeah, and it makes a world of difference. And this is what people in the community want. We want to make sure that people feel safe. We want to make sure that kids can play out. You know, I was out walking uh, before I came here this evening. You spend a lot of time <laughs> in the community in the with the people. I do. I do. I love that. I love that. And um, our seniors want to feel safe. They want to be able to walk to the store, the corner stores, the, the grocery stores. So um, we're, we're on the right track. And I thank my community for, for taking part of that, you know, being engaged. And it takes a lot for people to trust you. Let's talk about schools. Schools? Oh, I love schools too. I love children. Education. <laughs> Education is very important to me. I always say, you know, and I learned this from someone else, but in order to move people out of poverty, you have to education. You know, you can't give them money. You have to educate them. So I spent a lot of time in the schools. I'm, I'm hands on. Uh, yesterday morning, I was at one of the new schools in the new 16, well, the old 16, new 16, uh, Nicholson, and uh, spent time with the kids in the morning with their new STEM program that they have there. So I have a lot of STEM schools. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so it, it's great. And it shows the children that not only that um, it's careers, you know, 
all our children, they look at, well, basketball, get, you know, I want to be a basketball player. I want to be a football player. But uh, you can do animation. And I told one, one of the uh, children at the school that was working on an animation project, I said, you can work for Disney, you know. Yes. And one, one of uh, another uh, child was working on a roller coaster. I said, we've all been to Great America. So it enlightens them. It shows them when they go to these places that I can do this. Careers. We always talk about jobs. Mm -hmm. Careers. Careers. Absolutely. That's what I push for. Alderman folks. No school every, closing. Everybody mm -hmm. has been impressed by the fact that in the old, sick, in the oh. 15th Ward, that you didn't have any schools closed. No. How did you pull that off? I, I, again, I thank my <laughs> my constituents. Yes. You know, I always, I am a true voice of the people. That is a, know? a real accomplishment. Yeah, and, and I knew, I and I, I had a conversation with CPS, and it wasn't on school closing, it was on community schools. And I said, if they close schools over here, I say the people are going to lose it. But uh, we had one consolidation, mm -hmm. and actually the schools are very close together, about three, yeah. two to three blocks okay. away. Okay. And then there was Earl School yes. that um, they had consolidated with Goodlow. Okay. And then the Earl Building, we're looking to open that as the Limbloom K through sixth grade. Wow. So it'll still be a Chicago public school. That so is great. Let's yeah. talk about the issue of housing. Now, you know, I spent... 20 years at the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, and I know mm -hmm. a lot about this subject, and I, I have some sense mm -hmm. uh, in conversations that we've had mm -hmm. about your desire to create affordable housing. Yeah, we definitely need affordable housing. Um, I would say probably about, I don't know, probably about three years after being in office, and we were talking about um, issues with foreclosure and we did a press conference and I had did a little homework and I said at the press conference that there were 200 in 2005 they were counted 220 or 30 uh, foreclosures wow. in Inglewood per square mile now in Chicago Lawn, so we're going to talk about both we and Chicago Lawn, we were at Fairfield School, which is at 62nd and Fairfield, and in a one block, I mean a one square block radius, there were, if you just went around the school in a, yeah. in a mile radius, yes. there were 678 foreclosures. Wow. Okay. And um, just walking um, in the, in Inglewood, and it, it's devastating. And we need, first of all, we need affordable housing, you know, and uh, we have to work towards getting homes built in all those vacant lots. And it's a lot, you know, it can be, you know, and we want to mix it. And, and I think people are afraid when they see new stuff coming. You know, we, we talk about the, the whole food and uh, people that have been there are afraid of gentrification and they're thinking they're going to be kicked out but we have to work at that. Well, you know, you know mm -hmm. Alderman, with your vast experience in the food industry, mm -hmm. that is another issue, grocery stores oh, and, yeah. and food. I mean, uh, tell me your views and uh, mm -hmm. some of the things you've done and wanted to do, to do relative to uh, the food deserts. Okay, and you know what? And I, like I've, I've said, I've been there since I was seven. And as a little girl, I remember, you know, in within a eight block walking distance, we had like four, I think, and I didn't add national in there. National was on Damon. National T. Yeah. So we had four to five major grocery stores. Yes. And, and now, we, then we went to none. Now we have, uh, we have Food for Less, and um, we still need more. Mm -hmm. Food for Less was, was talking about a few years ago coming to 60th and Western uh, at the Old Jewels. Mm -hmm. and, um, but they didn't. They didn't come. And I would love to see development come there as well. Yeah. Um, and actually, I've just talked to someone, you know, a, a developer, and he said, well, maybe we need to put a Mariano's there. I say, why don't we just do it? You know, and then it creates, um, you know, it, it creates, what's the word you want to use, when you, competition. Yes. 
you know absolutely you know and and it's true even even the food for less in our community is more than it is in different areas but they can dominate the the prices that way and it brings a very important thing jobs jobs yes that's then. what everybody is kind of you know i can mm -hmm. remember when i was a younger man mm -hmm. than i am today at 64 mm -hmm. <coughs> when i was in high school i had a neighborhood youth core job mm -hmm. now it only paid a dollar 25 but a dollar 25 was a lot more back then than it is today in the mm -hmm. 60s every two weeks i had some money mm -hmm. in my pocket and it just made me feel so good at 16 years old i had my own money, money. so that's you know i i, I mm -hmm. tell a lot of people that's one of the things that that uh, young people would be good for you young mm -hmm. people to have programs like that and yeah. and of course the, the kind of uh, ideas that you're talking about with your vast experience in the food industry that would bring jobs but what are what why don't you elaborate a little bit on on, on uh, economic and uh, community development? development well the good thing that's happening you know everybody you know is talking about the whole foods that's coming to 63rd and and well the whole development actually not just you know they always say the whole food but i think that's the anchor but the the whole development that's coming there the chicago uh department of planning is looking at their affairs you know so in in the 16th ward you have halsted you have ashland and you have western that is a lot of economic development community development that can go on there and so that's what the area where was where the uh, jewels was at 60th and Western that has the old theater I mean it's wow. huge but the the problem was in the last remap the jewels was in the 16th ward and then the parking lot was in the 15th ward so how could you 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 have all this going on and so how could you come to agreement on what to do yes yeah. You know, so um, now it's all in the 16th Ward, and, and which is great. You know, uh, Ashland, the majority of Ashland's in the, in the 16th Ward now. And uh, so, you know, we're looking. I'm, I'm very open. And, and that marketing, merchandising background of what, what will fit, will be a good fit for the community. And yeah. that's the most important thing. We don't want to put businesses there that's that's not a good fit that will close down, you know, at, you know, a year after yes. you get it. You know, and um so that's what I'm I'm excited about that. You know, that take I take my my com my community activist part helped as an alderman. The economic development part helps with what I went to college for. So I have the best of kind of both is, worlds. Yes, you do. So I'm I'm very excited about that. And I'm what what what's your number that people need to punch when they vote early? I understand that early voting uh, will end uh, Saturday, April fourth, mm -hmm. uh, and of course the election is Tuesday, April seventh, the mm -hmm. runoff election. Right. What is your punch number? My punch number is fifty three. 53. 53. Punch 53. Yes. Now, I want to ask you another question or two. Mm -hmm. And that is, as an alderman, you have gained experience. You've actually worked on ordinances. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you've got the know-how. I mean, you don't have to go into the city hall and ask anybody where's the bathroom. The bathroom. <laughs> I mean, you can go right in I, there. I know where it is. You know exactly <laughs> what to do. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got a track record of accomplishments. Uh, among the many things that you worked on, what's the three of the things that I'm interested in mm -hmm. is going back to this business of these food deserts, which we just kind of talked about. You've talked about these stores but you've already been doing a lot of things and have had a lot of meetings with community people mm -hmm. and I know as a living in the Inglewood community myself I, I know that 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 is a really a big big deal and there are not as many aldermen in the city council that have really been pushing 
you know, or even really aware, in my opinion, from what I can see from where I'm sitting. And, you know, I'm associate publisher of the Chicago Street Journal newspaper, so I get out in the community and I ask a lot of questions. In fact, I'll ask five million questions just to get one answer. But I think this food, this food business is, is a very vital thing because there are a lot of our children, I mean, they need to be able to get fresh vegetables and, mm -hmm. and, and good food. Mm -hmm. And another thing that I want to run by you is uh, this business of uh, community engagement. I yes. have never seen a alderman in recent times that I see we can catch you out there talking to people, going door to door, not just when you're, you've been campaigning, but really trying to get a pulse of the community Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that that's a real attribute and mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons that I support you and mm -hmm. many of the people that I know support you. Mm -hmm. Now t tell me about this community <laughs> engagement business. Well, I think, it's, first of all, it's just who I am. You know, I'm a people person. I love people. I love children. And uh, it goes back to that grassroots community activists being out there talking to people and seeing what is going on and it makes a world of difference I think people realize that you care you really care and they want to be part of what's going on and uh, and just to know I was I was at a building yesterday and and people didn't know you know one one gentleman said they didn't remove the snow when it snowed and they didn't know, he didn't know to call. I don't say they, he didn't know, just pick up 311 and, and report it. And then you call your alderman if you really. Now, just to show you, now that's one of my, my 14 year old constituent at the time yes. that went to Urban Prep. He had my cell phone, a lot of, a lot of my kids, you know, my students. Yes. And a lot of my residents have my cell phone. And they don't, they don't abuse it, yes. believe it or not. And he gave me a call. It was the first big snow, and he said, they didn't shovel, you know, 63rd Street. Yes. And I said, I'll get right on. And I yeah. called I called Streets and Sanitation, and I called him back before he went to school because he was on the bus yes. and told him that I had called. I mean, and that's that the, is, the youth don't know. That is great. Yeah. And, and, you know, and just telling people whatever they have a concern about, you yes. know, no question is a dumb question, and that goes for our youth, too. You They're are an accessible alderman, and that mm -hmm. is not mm -hmm. often common in Chicago. I'm going to do an identifier. You're watching the Nixon Report. If you'd like to be on this show, you can call me at 312-918-2974. That's 312 918-2974. Alderman, we've got about five minutes mm -hmm. left. Uh, and as we move to the end of this program, I know that your punch number is... 53. <laughs> can you give us the address of your campaign office? My campaign office is at 6633 South Ashland Avenue. And the phone number there is 773-737-1090. And your website is www.tony, folks, T-O-N-I-F-O-U-L-K-E-S dot com. Mm -hmm. Impressive website. I've mm -hmm. seen a lot of them in my day. Mm -hmm. And your phone number? at the campaign office is? Again, 773-737-1090. Did you know your punch number when you add those two numbers together, it's eight, and eight is the number for a new beginning in the new 16th Ward. Mm -hmm. uh, Alderman, I'd like you to give a closing statement. We've got three minutes left. Uh, what you'd like to see um, and what you'd like to do once selected? Well, I, it's, my story is always the same. I grew up in a community um, that I love and um, 
at the age of seven, when I came to the community, it was a vibrant, beautiful community and with good schools, community schools, public schools, that I actually walked two blocks from my house to go to. Yes. You know, there was grocery stores, there were places to shop locally. You have a vision. I do. I just want, and I, I, I just wanted to be back the way it was. And, and I cannot do it by myself. So that's why it's so important to educate constituents, um, for the constituents to be engaged, and they feel part of what is going on and when we talk about jobs and building our new 16th Ward, we want the community to be there building brick and mortar. And also, we, I also believe in investing in human capital. You know, it's a lot of broken people in, in this world, not just in our community, but in this world. And we have to get people back and let them know that you know there is someone that's out there to help there's a lot of wonderful people in in the community and uh, i'm just excited and well, well alderman i am certainly impressed with you mm -hmm. i know that you've got a track record mm -hmm. i know you have a lot of courage i know that you're willing to take on anyone mm -hmm. including the mayor mm -hmm. if when they do things that are not in the interest of our community right and i thank you for that What's mm -hmm. your punch number one more time? Punch number is 53. Your punch number is 53. Mm -hmm. You've been watching the Nixon Report. If you want to be on this show, you can call me at 312-918-2974. At the end of the show, I always give thanks to my great mentor, a product of Inglewood, Morgan Carter. Alderman, I want to thank you for being on my show, mm -hmm. and I wish you well. Thank you. And I want to encourage all of the people that see this show to vote if you live in the 16th Ward for Tony Folks and to vote. Yes. Good night, Morgan. <laughs>